Well, let's see what actually happened on the day. Uh, Madonius gives a wonderful speech, and it's extremely long and uh, very noble. However, let's uh, move from the point there. So we're going to start at uh, uh, in paragraph 59. When he had spoken, he crossed the, uh, uh, um, the Asopus River and led the Persians forward at a run directly upon the track of the Greeks, who he believed to be in actual flight. He could not see the Athenians, for, as they had taken the, uh, the way of the plain, they were hidden from his sight by the hills. He therefore led on his troops against the uh, Spartans and the Tagans. Uh, when the commanders of the other divisions of the barbarians saw the Persians pursuing the Greeks so hastily, they all forthwith uh, seized their standards and hurried after them at their best speed in order to in great disorder and a disarray. On they went with loud shouts and in a wild rout, thinking to swallow up the runaways. Meanwhile, Pausinius, who had sent a horseman to the Athenians at the, at the time when the cavalry first fell upon him, with this message... Uh, now, it's a fairly long message, but I'm uh, just wondering, for flavor, why not? Let's read it. Men of Athens, now that the great struggle has come, which is to decide the freedom or the slave, slavery of Greece? We twain, Lacedomians and Athenians, are deserted by all the other allies who have fled away from us during the night. Nevertheless, we are resolved what to do. We must endeavor, as best we may, to defend ourselves and to succor one another. Now... Had the horse fallen upon you first, we ourselves with the Tagans, who remained faithful to the Greek cause, would have been bound to render you assistance against them. As, however, the entire body has advanced upon us, tis your place to come to our aid, sore pressed as we are by the enemy. Should you yourselves be so straitened that you cannot come, at least send us your archers, and be sure that you will earn our gratitude. We acknowledge that throughout this whole war. There has been no zeal to be compared to yours. We therefore doubt not that you will do us this service. The Athenians, as soon as they received the message, were anxious to go to the aid of the Spartans and to help them to the uttermost of their power. But as they were upon the march, the Greeks on the king's side, whose place in the line had been opposite theirs, fell upon them and so harassed them <coughs> by their attacks that it was not possible for them to give any succor, the succor they desired. Accordingly, the Spartans and the Tagans, whom nothing could induce to quit their side, were left alone to resist the Persians, including the light-armed and the, and the number... Of, uh, and the number of the former was 50,000, while that of the Tagans was 3,000. Now before, as they were about to engage with, the Mardonia, with Mardonius and the troops under him, they were ready to offer sacrifice. The victims, however, were some time, for some time were not favorable. <laughs> During the delay, many fell on the Spartan side, and still a great number were wounded. For the Persians had... Uh, made a rampart of their wicker shields and shot from behind them with such clouds of arrows that the Spartans were sorely distressed. The victims continued uh, uh, unprohibitous till at least, till at last Pausinius raised his eyes to Harium uh, of, the, of the Plataeans and calling the goddess to his aid, besought her uh, not to disappoint the hopes of all the Greeks. And as he offered this prayer, the Tagans advancing before the rest rushed forward against the enemy and the Spartans, who had obtained a favorable omen the moment that Pacinius had prayed, at length, after their long delay, advanced to the attack. And while the Persians on their side are left shooting and prepared to meet them, and first the combat was at, was at the wicker shields. Afterwards, when they were swept down, a fierce contest took place by the side of the Temple of Ceres, which lasted long and ended in hand-to-hand -hand struggle. The barbarians many times seized hold of the Greek spears and break them, for in boldness and warlike spirit, the Persians were not a whit inferior to the Greeks, but they were without bucklers, untrained, and far below the enemy in respect of skill in arms. Sometimes singly, sometimes in bodies of ten, now fewer and now more in number, they dashed upon the Spartan ranks and so perished. The fighting went, uh, went most against the Greeks where Mardonius mounted upon a white horse and surrounded by the bravest of all the Persians, the thousands, the thousand picked men, fought in person. So long as Mardonius was alive, this body resisted all attacks, and while they defended their own lives, struck down no small number of Spartans. 
But after Mardonius fell and the troops with him, which were the main strength of the army, perished, the remainder yielded to the Spartans and took to, uh, took to flight. Their light clothing and want of bucklers was of the greatest hurt to them, for they had to contend with men heavily armed, while they themselves were without any such defense. I think that speaks nicely to the uh, significant disparity in the <clears throat> the technology and weapon systems uh, of two very different cultures here. So that's a really interesting, uh, you know, direct quote and commentary from from Herodotus. Right. Uh, then was the warning of the oracle f fulfilled, and the vengeance which was due to the Spartans for the slaughter of the of Leonidas uh, was paid to them by Mardonius. Then too did Pisonius, uh, the son of Clombrotus and grandson of Anax Anaxandrius, I admit to recount his other ancestors since they were the same with those of Leonidas, um, win a victory exceeding in glory all those to which our knowledge extends. Mardonius was slain uh, by a uh, I mean, uh, would, I would pronounce this Aminenstus, uh, but that little uh, umlaut over the E looks uh, suspicious. A man famous in Sparta, the man whom, who in the Messenian War, which came after the struggle against the Medes, fought a battle near uh, Stenolarius with but 300 men against the whole force of the Messenians. And I think we'll just skip through what he does here. Uh, move on to chapter to paragraph 65. The Persians, as soon as they were put to flight by the Lacedaemonians, ran hastily away without preserving any order and took refuge in their own camp within the wooden defense which they had raised in the Thebian territory. It is a marvel to me how it came to pass that although the battle was fought quite close to the grove of Ceres, not yet a single Persian seems to have died on the sacred soil, nor even to have set foot upon it, while round about the precinct in the unconsecrated ground, great numbers perished. I imagine it is lawful in matters which uh, concern the gods to imagine anything that the goddess herself kept them out, because uh, they had burnt a sacrifice, they had burnt her dwelling at Eleusis. Such then was the issue of this battle. The gods always factor into these things, don't they? All right, so let's pause for a moment. So let's have a quick look at uh, what Artabasis uh, is uh, is doing on another part of the field. He's facing off against the Athenians, I believe, <clears throat> and he uh, orders his men to march in a fairly organized manner. So we're looking now at paragraph 66. Uh, he's uh, issued all these orders and the men are marching forward and then he sees that the Persians are already in flight over on the left wing and instead of keeping the same order he wheels his troops suddenly around and beat a retreat nor did he even seek shelter within the palisade or behind the walls of Thebes but hurried on to Phocius, uh wishing to make his way to the Hellespont with all possible speed such accordingly was the course which the, which, which the Persians took as for the Greeks upon the king's side, while most of them played the coward uh, purposely, the Boeotians, on the contrary, had a long struggle with the Athenians. Uh, those of the Thebans who were attached to the Medes display especially no little zeal. Far from playing the coward, they fought with such fury that 300 of the best and bravest among them were slain by the Athenians in this passage of arms. But at last they too were routed and fled away, not, however, in the same direction as the Persians and the crowd of allies, who, uh, who were having taken no part in the battle, they ran off without striking a blow, but to the city of Thebes, is, is where they ended up being, going to. Uh, let's see here. And so then uh, Herodotus then talks about uh, how the, the Persian troops were the core of the army and that the rest of the barbarians that were, or other tribes that were associated in the Persian army really relied on uh, the morale of the Persian forces being strong, uh, otherwise they would they would cut cut and run. All right, and so then it talks about how the victors go on and pursue everything. Uh, meanwhile, the flight continued. Uh, tidings reached the Greeks, who were drawn up around Harium, and and so were absent from the battle. That the fight was begun, and that the Porcinius was gaining the victory. 
Hearing this, they rushed forward without any order, the Corinthians taking the upper road across the skirts of the Scytheron and the hills, which led straight to the temple of Ceres, while the Megarians and the Philasians followed the level route through the plain. These last had almost reached the enemy when the Theban horse espied them and observing their disarray, dispatched against them the squadron of which uh, Asaphodorus, the son of Tamanda, was captain. He charged them and with such effect that it left 600 of their number dead upon the plain and pursuing the rest compelled them to seek shelter in Scytheron. So these men perished without honor. Right, let's see. So now we've got all the forces hiding out in the little wooden fortress, the camp. And since uh, the Spartans were not skilled in the attack of wall places, but on the arrival of the Athenians, a more violent assault was made and the wall was for a long time attacked with fury. In the end, the valor of the Athenians and their perseverance prevailed. They gained the top of the wall and breaking a breach through it enabled the Greeks to pour in. And I think then we had some pretty much wholesale slaughter carry on. Uh, yes. In good truth, they, uh, they were all half dead with fright and huddled as so many thousands were into so narrow and confined a space. With such tame, tameness did they submit to be slaughtered by the Greeks that of the 300,000 men who composed the army, Meeting the 40,000 of whom Artabasis was accompanied in this flight, no more than 3,000 outlived the battle. I imagine that uh, we would wear out a fair number of swords and, uh, and spear blades trying to uh, puncture 270 odd thousand or 260 odd thousand bodies, right? Right, so that's pretty much a summary of the battle. Let's just see if there's anything else here we need to look at. Herodotus goes on at great length uh, through uh, 71, paragraph 71, perhaps all the way through to 77, uh, talking about the various deeds of individuals and who uh, from the various uh, tribes and localities of the Greeks uh, uh, earned the most honors. And I won't, uh, won't detail you a, a lot of those things. Uh, they, they're all very interesting, and, uh, but uh, of not not uh, really uh, pertaining to the battle so much. It doesn't give us a feel for any more of the uh, the tactics that were used. And in fact, when you look at this uh, writing, it really doesn't give us very much insight into what happened, other than the general dispositions of the forces and the fact that we have. Uh, let's try and uh, take this little zoom out here. We do have these forces back here in this sunlight, which I'll try and block out, uh, here that really do not participate in the battle terribly much. And then uh, uh, this, these, are the, these are the forces that did a runner. Uh, they didn't actually participate in the battle very much, other than the cavalry, which seemed to have managed to meander its way up here and then engage with some of these forces in some way shape or form and I think these forces here go up this road and the rest of these guys uh, try and come up through the plain here uh, across this higher ridge so it's interesting that uh, this enormous force uh, uh, broke fairly quickly once the the Mardonius's, uh forces were damaged and what we'll do now is uh, we'll pause here and, uh, and wrap it up and we'll start another conversation about the actual battle uh, and how we may handle it here and what that may entail.